The Isle of Wight is a beautiful place. From its sand-swept beaches to its quaint little villages and rolling green hills and countryside. For those of us lucky enough to live here or visit on a regular basis, this charming little island holds a special place in our hearts. Now I'm a Rye boy, I was born here and I've seen much of what the island landscape has to offer. There is one place though I have never been, which is quite odd because it's quite a large area of the island and that is Newtown Creek. So I thought today I'd break new ground, go somewhere I've never been and whilst there tell you a little bit about the history of the area because it is fascinating. Newtown is located five miles west of Newport and one mile north of the village of Shellfleet. It is a sparsely populated area and one of the most naturally diverse places on the whole island. Now there is a good reason why I've never been here before, simply because I don't have a driving licence and Newtown, even by Isle of Wight standards, is in the proverbial end of nowhere. That though is not a good enough excuse because I have two legs, I'm still young-ish and even though walking from ride may be a bit too far, there is a bus route that does pass close to the area. So enough with the excuses, let's crack on. Newtown once had a bus route operating only a handful of services a day. If you want to visit today though, and you are without vehicle, the number seven bus is the best bet. Getting off at either Hebbardens or Barton's Corner and heading north towards Town Lane. From here, it's only a short walk to our first new town relic. Halfway up Town Lane, we pass over this bridge and you get the first glimpse of the creek itself, this area of outstanding natural beauty, which is now a nature reserve. The salt marshes here now play host to a wide variety of different species, thriving in the rich habitat of their natural surroundings. The area though was not always this sparsely populated, as in the past Newtown was much more important than you might think. Perhaps the clue is in the name. Newtown therefore implying it's a town. It's in fact got a town hall, which still exists, but it's a village, a very small, remote one at that. Its name though is a reminder of its past, as in medieval times, this whole area was an important thriving part of the island's economy. In the early 14th century, the salt marshes were found to be awash with oyster beds. This spawned a commercial boom, and Newtown fastly became a busy harbour, bustling with sailing vessels and local trade. In 1344, it was commercially rated at twice the value of Newport. Back then though, Newtown had a different name, Franchville, which translates as Freetown. Being the vital artery for trade between the island and the mainland, its inhabitants basked in their wealth and organised an annual three-day festival named in honour of St Mary Magdalene. Sat here overlooking the tranquility of the water, the flourishing wildlife and the lack of modern human footprint apart from of course the boats in the harbour. You could be fooled into thinking you travel back in time. But that of course is untrue because if we travelled far enough back in time, this area would be a hive of human activity. So what happened? Well, oddly, the French. Well, not just the French. In the mid-1300s, the bubonic plague or Black Death swept across Europe, resulting in the worst pandemic in human history. Between 100 and 200 million people lost their lives. Newtown, then Franchville, was hit hard by the plague. In consequence, the area experienced a devastating loss of life. Despite this, the place may have recovered if it wasn't for the French invasion of 1377. At this time, Newtown and Yarmouth were the two largest towns on the Isle of Wight and were seen as prime targets. This resulted in mass destruction, with most of the town being burned to the ground and the population being completely overpowered by the forces of the invading soldiers. There is another stranger, more far-fetched twist to the tale though. The story goes like this. Newtown, being a port, had food stores and granaries, 
These over time attracted huge nests of rats, causing considerable damage to the supplies. Desperately, the town offered a sum of £50 to anyone who could rid the town of this vermin. The legend goes that a Pied Piper got the job, attracting the rats with his playing and getting them to follow him. Climbing into a rowing boat, he lured them out to the mudflats in the harbour, where the rats got stuck and subsequently drowned as the tide rose. After his efforts, the piper then returned to the town, where the mayor refused to pay him his full 50 pounds, instead offering him but 20. In disgust, the piper played another tune, this time luring all the children out of the town where they disappeared into the woods and were never seen again. Clearly this is folklore, though if there was any truth in it, this story would actually explain why when the French attacked in 1377, the town was devoid of young men to stand up to the wrath of the invasion, as this generation of people would be missing. Newtown never recovered from the invasion. The last attempt to revive the town came in 1584, when Elizabeth I granted Newtown two parliamentary seats. Unfortunately, the sparse population and easily bribed locals allowed Newtown to evolve into one of the most infamous rotten boroughs in the UK. The town hall still stands to this day, surrounded by a quaint little village and a 19th century church built on the ruins of the medieval chapel. There is also a pub, but you might have to wait a little while to get served as it shut in 1916. There is a pub though in Shell Fleet, so I will be finishing the walk there for my beery ablutions. Thank you so much for watching this video on the history of Newtown Creek. It is a beautiful place and I will be returning again soon. If you like the video, then please do subscribe to our channel and check out our other videos. We also do a disused railway series where we walk every disused railway on the Isle of Wight. Thank you very much for watching and uh, we'll see you again soon. Have a lovely day.